So when you set up domino, the first piece you set up and then put second piece close to that. So if you trigger it and the second one is triggered by the first, that's the idea. So recursive function design is based on mathematical induction. Recursive function is math induction. Mathematical induction is uh, doing in three steps. So when you prove something, you, you when you prove uh, any problem, mathematical induction is as follows. But you cannot use mathematical induction for any kind of a problem. But it, it, if it has a certain property, so one of the most important property of the problem to solve is that the problem size uh, is uh, expressed in terms of an uh, integer number. Problem size is in terms of an integer number. So you have a problem size of 5 or 10 or 20 or million and so on. Suppose you want to compute the sum of uh, all student scores. Then it's uh, that kind of problem because uh, number of students is n. It's a uh, problem size is proportional to the number of students. Uh, so you wanna, uh, So that kind of problem if the size is uh, expressed in terms of integer, then you can prove the problem using mathematical induction. So mathematical induction, step one, is uh, uh, solve a problem for trivial size. Solve for trivial size. Sometimes n is a 1 or 2 and the like. So uh, calculate the sum of uh, uh, students' scores. Trivial size is if you have one student only, that is just a sum, a very simple. So solve for minimum trivial size. Uh, so that step is called the base case solution. The base case of the problem always is trivial. You can solve it directly. Step two, assume, assume that solution for n minus 1 size is available. Assume that. Solution for one less size, smaller size solution is available. That's the second step. Here, you do not solve, but you assume that. Then step three is now solve for size n with the Number one, assumption. Assumption in step two. Here. You assume smaller size solution is available using that and then do any known facts. Using known facts, just solve for n. So again, assume solution for smaller size. We are looking for solution for size n. Assume that smaller size, any smaller size, one less, two less, any smaller size solution is available. Assume that. Then how do you solve for size n? That's step three. That's called the mathematical induction. Uh, so if I apply this one, so let's solve a, a sum of integers uh, 1 through n. So problem is a sum of integers, a 1 through n. Then problem size is in terms of integer n. So that kind of problem we can solve with the math mathematical induction. So mathematical induction says, uh, first step, solve for trivial size. If a si size is a 1, solution is a 1. Step 1. Step 2. This part, uh, many students have difficulty. It is very simple, but many students have difficult because uh, through the life experiences, uh, many of you know that there is not, not, there's nothing called the free lunch. Always strings attached. If it is completely free, you are suspicious about that. So step two is uh, very difficult to those who had uh, such experience. Uh, so step two says, uh, assume smaller size solution is available. We didn't solve it yet. So you have a difficulty that you have a solution. Assuming you have a solution is very difficult. But what it says is that assume smaller size solution is available. So we are solving for n. Then small any smaller size solution is available. Then for s1 through n minus 1, suppose 
we have uh, that solution available. So sum of integers uh, 1 through n uh, minus 1 is available. Just assume that. You don't know how to solve it. Just assume that. Then step 3. What is the sum of integers uh, 1 through n? Using assumption and the known facts. Get it? So sum of uh, integers uh, 1 through n. So you have a 1, 2, 3, all the way, n minus 1, and then n, n. If I know sum of integers are 1 through n minus 1, that's a step 2. We assumed that, right? But if I know that, suppose this is x, then what is the sum of integers are 1 through n? x plus n, right? So solution is uh, assume that smaller size solution is available, 1 through n minus 1, then simply add the n there. So this part is what? Known facts. One of the known facts is that if we assume, if we know that, simply add n. That is the solution for n. And this is a mathematical induction. Why does this work? Domino effect. We solve the four size of one. So we have a first piece of the domino. Second piece is when n is two. When n is 2, what it says is that when n is 2, what it says is that s1 plus 2, right? Do we know s1? First piece. And then add a 2, so 3. So since first one is triggered, second one will be triggered. So when n is 2, we got it. When n is a 3, n is a 3 means s3 is s2 plus 3. What is S2? We got it in previous step. And we simply add the 3, then that's a solution for size of 3, and so on. So like a domino effect, we begin with the 1, and then 2, and 3, and 4, just so we can get any size of solution. So that's a similar idea from the domino effect. So we solve this way. Then how do we write this idea into a function in programming language? That is called a recursive function design. So here, we are not going to create many classes uh, for this uh, exercise. Just one function is uh, fine. So let me just create one function. So here, I want to design a function which calculates the sum of integers of 1 through n. Huh? So I want to call function called name the sum, and if I give a 10, then that function will return sum of integers of 1 through 10, and that will be printed. Huh? So let's uh, design a sum function. So n is provided. Then we want to return sum of integers of 1 through n. Of course, you can quickly design it using a for loop. Using a for loop, 10 times you can uh, add that. But we want to design recursive function based, based on mathematical induction. In C++, uh, before you use a function, the definition should be provided. So typically, we may put function definition of a sum before main. But that is not professional style. Then if you don't want to give a full definition of a function ahead of its use, you need to give a, at least a prototype of it. Prototype means a function header, like in class definition in .h, you give a prototype of function only, without definition, right? Exactly the same thing you need to give. So int return type, function name, one argument, int. Prototype should be given if you want to define later. That's a C++ requirement. So recursive function design. Step one, mathematical induction step one, solve for trivial size, which means if n is one, solution is one. Sum of integers are one through one. So trivial size, this is step one of mathematical induction. Step two, assume smaller size solution is available. 
So if you call function sum with the n, that's a solution for size n. So assuming smaller size solution is available, which means you call function with any smaller size. If you call a function, then that's assuming the solution is available. So here we call the function itself, that is called the recursive function. So smaller size solution is available if you call the function. Step three, solve for size n with assumption. Assumption is a smaller size solution is available with a known factor. Known factor is that if you know sum of integers 1 through n minus 1, then sum of integers 1 through n is a simply at the n. So this is the solution for size n. Function returns the solution. And then we are done. Sum n minus 1 is a step 2 of a mathematical induction. Do you know the terminology for that? Step 2 is called induction hypothesis. Assume. Hypothesis means ass assuming something, right? So induction hypothesis. And then step 3, known fact is a Step three, known fact is a sum n minus, and then if you add the one, that's a known factor. It's a sum of integers of one through n. To make it more robust, uh, <coughs> you may just return this way so that any stupid uh, programmer can call function sum with any integer number. So make the, just the program uh, uh, robust for that. So this is a recursive design. So as I told you, some of you or many of you have some doubt that you use a function call before you finish it. Before you finish the definition of that, you have never done that so far. Once you finish the function definition, then you call it to use it. Here, you call the function before you completing the code. That is a, the first a very troubling feature when you do recursive design first time. Okay. But just to translate the mathematical induction concept directly into program languages like that, then why does this work or how does this work? So let's try to trace uh, the program. So we call sum, suppose uh, four. Then what this code says is that sum four is provided uh, and the 4 is not less than 1, not equal to 1. We call return sum 3 plus 4, right? So this one ge will generate sum 3 plus 4 will be returned for that. So now we call sum 3. 3 is provided, uh, not true, not true. So we return sum 3 minus 1 plus 3. So this will generate sum 2 plus 3. Also, this will call itself with the sum 1 plus 2. Right? So if I call sum with the 1, now it's triggered over here. If n is a 1, return 1. So this function returns 1. And then 1 plus 2, 3 is a returned here. 3 plus 3, 6 is returned uh, for this call. 6 plus 4, 10 is returned uh, for some 4. So 10 will be, 10 is printed uh, as a final return value. So this is a, a trace of the recursive function. Okay. And as you can see, if you design some recursive way, you have a very compact code. 
If you do iteratively with a for loop, you need to do computation all by yourself. Uh, but using mathematical uh, induction, you have a very compact code. So, so that's the first uh, study. And next one, let's try to compute uh, factorial. Factorial means uh, if I have uh, n factorial, math, it defines one times, two times, up to n times. That's the definition of a factorial, right? So zero factorial in the math defined as a one. One factorial is defined as a one as well. And two factorial is two times one. Three factorial is three times two times one, and so on. That's the definition of a factorial in math. So let's define factorial. So the prototype is a, if you do some, some number of a factorial, the number becomes huge. Eh? Intertype is limited to certain billion only. So to make it safer, let's return double value instead of integer. And the factorial will take one integer. Then 10 factorial, 20 factorial, and the like we want to compute. Factorial n. So we compute with a mathematical induction recursive design. Step one. Solve for trivial size. If trivial size of the factorial n is a 0 or n is a 1, trivial size from method definition value is a 1. Else, Step two, assume smaller size solution is available. So any smaller size uh, for factor one minus one is available. Then step three, how do you solve for size n with assumption and the known factor? Solution for size n is uh, if I know solution for size n minus one, then what's the known fact? Multiply n there then that's the solution for size n. So that's the definition of a factorial function recursively. So very similar to sum. Sum, you have just sum of integers, but factorial is multiplication of integers. Very similar to that. Next one, do you know what Fibonacci series is? Yes. What is that? Exactly. So a series of number, the number is a sum of a previous two numbers. So phi, Fibonacci series. So it begins with a zero and then one. Two numbers are given and the next number is a sum of a previous two, which is zero plus one. Sum of a previous two, one plus one. Sum of a previous two. Sum of a previous two. Sum of a previous two. and so on. So always the number is a sum of a previous two numbers. That's called a Fibonacci series. So let's compute the number in nth position. This is a zeroth position, first, second. So what is a nth position number? Nth position, what is the number here? Is a sum of a previous two numbers. So we need to keep computing that, right? N minus two. N minus two plus N minus one. Yeah, N minus two and N minus one. So what's a number in N minus two position? We need to compute that, right? So let's design a function to do this job. So we want to find Fibonacci number in nth position. So if I do Fib 10, 10th position of a Fibonacci series number we want to find. Yes? You need a, a T in the parameter. Oh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. 
So let's de define Fibonacci series. N is given, then what's the nth number? Let's uh, return nth number for that. You may do some iterative uh, computing, though. Let's design recursively. Mathematical induction. F step one, solve for trivial size. If n is zero, zero from the definition. If uh, n is a one, return one. That's a trivial size. Uh, from the mathematical definition, we have a two. Now, what's uh, the nth number? Nth number is uh, assume if any smaller size solution is avail available, how do you make, how do you get the size uh, of n? Assume any smaller size solution. This is one of the smaller size. And then assume another smaller size. Then just add them. Then that's a solution for current size. That's it. If you do recursive function design first time, first the hurdle is a use of the assumption. You call the function before you finish it. You know there is no such, no such a thing called the free lunch. That's a very difficult to accept it in your mental map. It's a very difficult to accept it. That's the first step. Second step is a program code. The source code is too short that you are not convinced that it really works. <laughs> if you are asked to write the Fibonacci number without recursive design, you need to write at least tens of lines to do so. But you have only three lines. Or you can put less than three lines if you want to make it compact and so. So that's another thing. The complete the code is too short. You are not convinced yourself <laughs> it's really correct or not. That's the second step. Okay. But just uh, precisely follow the mathematical induction. Step one, solve for trivial size. Sometimes you solve uh, trivial size for more than one case, uh, depending on the problem, problem property. Step two, assume solution is available. Any smaller size solution is available, not just one less. Uh, that's a mathematical induction. Any smaller size solution is available. In this case, we use two smaller sizes. Out of smaller sizes, how do you solve for size n with a known factor? Here, known factor is add two together is known fact about the Fibonacci number. Then we got the solution. Do I have any syntax error? Let's check, compile it. It works. So there's no 55 is a Fibonacci number. There's no syntax issue and it runs. Okay, let's practice another one, just another variation. And these skills will be used in designing binary search tree, the last one we are going to study. So understanding the recursive function design is very important. If you don't understand it, there's no way for you to understand the binary search tree implementation. And these are very simple ones. Huh? So try to understand uh, fully. So next one is a given an array. Given an array, we want to compute the sum of all the numbers in the array. Using for loop is very simple, right? Just do the index 0 through size minus 1, just add them. But we want to do recursively. So let's uh, put our mind the mapping into recursive design one. So let's set up some data to test the integer. I have an array with the initial value. So I have a, an integer array with a 10 numbers. What I want to do is uh, I want to call some array. I pass array, name A, and then how many there? 10 elements are there. So I want to pass two information, the name of the array and the size of the array. And then function sum array, what it does is sum of uh, all the elements in the array. 
So let's first one is int array and then integer as a size. That's a prototype. And then let's define the function. Array size. So when you design some array function, we all you know is the name of the array and then how many elements in there. And then we are going to calculate the sum of all the elements. Mathematical induction, step one. What will be the trivial case if size is zero, then no element at all, we say zero. Another trivial case is size is one, then return what? First element in the array. So first element in the array is the sum, right? So trivial case. Now, assume smaller size solution is available. Here, the size is a size. Size is a, it's confusing. <laughs> the problem size is a size variable, right? Any smaller size solution is available. Then how do you have a solution for the entire size? So here, the size is a number of elements. Suppose you know the sum of elements are one less size of the array, then sum of the elements of the entire array is uh, just add the element uh, left over. Right? So return smaller size. So with the n, one less size. Then which element is left over? The last element, right? So we pass uh, just one reduced size. Suppose uh, size coming in is a 10. If we subtract one, so we pass a size uh, array of a size nine. So the last element is left over. So known fact is that now if I add the last element, that's the solution. So where is the last element? In that size. And Size or size is size minus one. Size. Index is always one less, right? So n a size minus one is the last element in the array, which is 10. So this is just a size. 10 is reduced down to nine. And this is solution for first nine elements. And then we add the 10th element, which is at index size minus one. Then that's a solution for the entire array. I know you have some mental difficulty now. It's, the code is too short. And you call use the solution before you complete it. That's always a difficult one if you do recursive design first time. Anyway, uh, integer 1 through 10, so, uh, 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 sum is a 55. So 55, the sol uh, correct solution comes. A little bit more different one. Now, given an array, we want to find uh, the maximum value in the array. If you're just uh, using loop, uh, it's uh, easy, super easy, right? If you, have, uh, you, are, you are given an array, and then size of the array is given, 100 elements there, just uh, find uh, the maximum value. That is super easy by doing for loop. But let's define design using recursive function. So suppose I give uh, this way. Max number in the array. Very similarly, we define max array. Array is provided and size is provided. Now let's return the maximum one from the sol uh, uh, array. Mathematical induction, step one, solve for trivial size. 
In this case, a better may be, you may want to assert the size is at least one, right? That would be a base. So you may do assert size is a, at least one, something like that. Then you don't have to worry about what is the maximum if uh, no element is there and so on. So let's do that way. C assert. So let's have at least one element. Then, what is the trivial size case? If size is a one, trivial case, what, which one is the maximum value? And zero, the first element, the only one. If size is one, you have the only one there. Now, we need to do a little bit more. Suppose uh, we know the maximum element uh, for one less size element. Suppose uh, we know that maximum number up to here. That's a mathematical induction. Uh, induction hypothesis number two assumes smaller size solution is available. So highlighted one is smaller size. So assume solution is available, which is a 60, right? So suppose the solution is available, then what's the solution for the entire size? What's the known, known fact is? Compare. How do you find the solution for the entire size? Maximum number from the highlighted one is uh, available by assumption, right? Then compare with a 10. Whichever is larger is the solution, right? If I have a 70 here, 70 is larger from the solution, so 70 solution. If I have a 10, the given solution from smaller size is bigger than, that is still the solution. That's a known factor. So how do you write that known factor here is a So, current max uh, is a max array with a smaller size, provide n with a one less size element. Then, solution is compare t and uh, what? Smaller size solution is available, then compare t and uh, what? and size minus one, the last element, right? Compare the last element. So here, for explicit programming, last one is a n size minus one. So here, t is the maximum value from the first one except the last one. That's a t. And last one is a, this guy. So compare t and the last one. Whichever is larger is the solution. So if uh, t last one, then return t, else return last one. Move it up. So slight more complex application. Given an array, if you know the solution for smaller size, then compare with the last one. That's how to solve that. So far, so good. We are just dealing with the numbers. A little bit complex application, but that's deals with the, the uh, idea of a mathematical induction. Now, last example I'm going to show you is uh, one of the most complex one, and that shows the power of uh, recursive design, which means if you don't do this one recursively, the solution could be extremely complex. But uh, recursive function Catch a very simple solution. So one of the class classical examples is called the Tower of Hanoi. Anybody heard of it? Tower of Hanoi problem? The Tower of Hanoi problem is uh, you have uh, 
a disk saw. So disk with a hole in the center, but disks are of different sizes. Hole there, hole there, and you have many disk saw, but all different sizes. The uh, game is, a uh, problem is, uh, your disks could be stacked uh, on the top of each other, but the rule is uh, only the one on the top should be smaller than the one on beneath of that. That's uh, the only rule. So you can stack this way. Any smaller and smaller one, you can stack that, but you cannot violate the size ones. So initially, you have n discs in one pole. Then move uh, one at a time. You can only move uh, one disc at a time from one pole to another pole, one at a time, without uh, violating stacking rule. Move uh, all the discs uh, from start to end using one as a temporary uh, storage, temporary stacking pole. So if I, if I have a two discs only, so one disc, two disc, then problem is move all of those from start to end using one as a temporary stacking pole. Then solution is uh, move uh, this one to here first, uh, and then move uh, this one here, and then move uh, this one there. So that's the solution, step by step. How do you move a disc saw? Now we have a three disc saw. So I have a one, two, three. Start and end. So let's try. The one on the top, move here. This one, let's move here. And then this one move here. And then the biggest one move here. And then smallest one you can move back here. The middle one here, small one here. Oops, this is end. So we relabel the pole. That's the solution, right? Or <laughs> the first move was wrong. Because we had the wrong move at the first place, we end up in the wrong destination, and the like. So, write the program, which tells you print out uh, the move sequence for any number of disk, given disk n. When I write uh, run your program, it says that move from S to suppose this is this pole is called the T and then E. From S to T, T to S, T to E, E to S, and so on. Always uh, the one on the top should be moved from one pole to another, not violating the stacking rule. Then uh, if you want to write a solution in a function for any n disks, uh, how many number of lines do you need to write? Uh, just approximate, just the first impression, how long the program would be. Quite complex, right? At the first, uh, I, you, you may have a little idea how even to write the code for that. You don't, you don't know that at all, but first impression is a uh, program could be, should be very complex. But if we do recursive function, the whole solution could be less than 10 lines. Entire code, uh, five to six lines is sufficient. So this, problem demonstrates the power of a recursive function design. So let's find the idea how do we apply recursive function here. So recursive function, step one, solve for trivial size. If we have only one disk, trivial size, right? Move from S to E, that's solution. One disk only. Step two, assume I know that this is uh, the most uh, difficult part. Uh, assume solution for smaller size solution is available, which means n minus one disks. Uh, you know the solution. Assume that. Step three, now solve for size n. Using assumption and known facts. 
So most critical problem here is that how do we interpret the, what's the meaning of this assumption? assumption? The previous ones are all number-based, so assumption, understanding the assumption is pretty easy. So sum of integers 1 through n, smaller size solution means 1 through n minus 1, I know the solution. So we can understand it pretty straightforward. But here, power of Howey problem, what do you mean by assuming solution for n minus 1 size is available? Can you tell me what's the meaning of that? What does it mean? You can solve for one n minus one disk. So what does it mean? I can solve for uh, the disk before the I mean before the finishing fork. I can stack all of them properly. Uh, not exactly. Assumption is uh, I know how to solve uh, with a uh, one less disk, so n minus one disk. So what's uh, what what does it mean? The last one is just gonna no, no, don't, don't, don't think about the less one or not. Just a one minus n. Uh, you can solve uh, for nine disks. Uh, what does it mean? You can solve a problem for nine disks. What does it mean? It means you can move uh, all nine disks uh, from one pole to another. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's the solution. Solution is uh, you are going to move a uh, number of disks from one place to another. So n minus 1 disks, you know the solution means uh, you can move uh, n minus 1 disks from one place to another. That's the meaning of the so solution. So how do I apply that to solve size n? To solve for size n, assume you can handle n minus 1 disks. So here you have uh, n minus 1 disks, and then you have one more disk. So n minus 1 disks, you know how to move from one place to another, which means you have one pole, another pole, another pole. Initially, you have n minus 1 disks, and then you have an nth disk here. You know how to move n minus disks. There may be a very complex process there, but assuming solution available means anyway I know how to move n minus one disk from one to another. So start, end, temporary. First step is what? n minus one disk so move from S to T. n minus one disk, so except the last one, move from S to T. Do you know how to do that? We assume that. Assuming we know that, right? <laughs> That's an assumption. We assume that. So I know that it's very difficult for you to assume now in this complex problem, though. But what mathematical intersection says? Assume it. Solution is available. OK? Accept it. It's a re actually free. No strings attached. Just accept that. So n minus 1 disk. So I can move from s to t. That's an assumption. Then known fact is now I move the biggest disk to E. What's next? I know how to move n minus 1 disk from one place to other, so move from T to E, n minus 1 disk. That's the solution. Okay, n minus 1 disks, I, I can move from one place to other, then how do you solve for n size? n minus 1 disk from source to temper, the largest disk from S to E, and then n minus 1 disk on t move to e. That's it. That's the solution. So let's write the code for that. So what you want to do here is a Tower of Hanoi problem. Simply print the instructions, avoid. And then number of disks is provided. A given number of disks, uh, as you run this program, call this function, it will print the instructions. Uh, from which to which you need to move. So here we simply call Hanoi with a two disks or three disks. Three disks. Void Hanoi int n disks. 
So this function will print uh, the step-by-step -step instruction for n-size disks. In uh, induction hypothesis, the recursive design, step one, solve for trivial size. If we have one disk, then instruction is from move from S to N. So in this one, we need to slight modification is that first of parameter is number of disks, so then let's specify from where to where using which temporary pole. So from one starting and the three is end uh, using two as a temp. So let's call function that way so that the function could be utilized from where to where you want to move. Int, int, int. So here, first one is number of disks. Second one is start poll index. Second one is tar end poll index. And then using this one as a temporary poll. So start to end using temporary. So if you have only one disk, uh, then move uh, from S to E. That's all, right? Move uh, from S to E. You can do directly without using T at all. Otherwise, uh, of course, uh, you may want to uh, double check, assert disk is uh, at least positive. Uh. Else, uh, if it's more than one, assume smaller size solution is uh, available then use that and known facts to solve it. As I explained, the n minus 1 disks I can move. So first step is a move, move n minus 1 disks from s to where? t, using e as a temporary location. As I showed here, n minus 1 disks move from s to t using E as a temporary temporary location. And then step two is what? Move from the largest one, move at, from S to E. Largest one, S to E, right? And then what? n minus 1 disks on t from t to e using s as a temporary. So the last step is the one on t, n minus 1 disk from t to e, we need to move. That's it. So less than 10 lines, including Assertion, this is solution. Yes? Uh, the assert disks needs to be correct? Yes, I have disks. So where? Uh, in your assert. Oh, yeah. That's correct. Otherwise, compile error. I know that some of you don't, don't want to believe this one is actual solution, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is actual solution. So let's try to run it. For three disks, uh, here are the solution. Move a one from one, uh, one uh, pole one, two, three, and one to two, three to two, one to three, and then just follow those instructions. You can verify that. Then you have a solution for it with the three disks. Uh. Now, this one works for any arbitrary number. If I have uh, five disks, uh, then you have a long instructions there. Yes, long five disks. You need to follow these instructions. If you have ten disks, you will have thousands of lines.
there. Anyway, if you follow one by one, that's the solution. And uh, the Tower of Hanoi problem is a very classical problem to demonstrate the power of uh, recursive design. You will see how simple the solution appears uh, as source code. If you try to write it without recursive function, just iteratively, just try a little bit for five minutes. Uh, then you will see it will be hugely complex code that you may begin with. Yes? Um, for the last line of the Hanoi, mm -hmm. um, why don't you see out from here? This one? Yeah, no, 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 like, no the one below the so step one, move n minus one here. Step two, move this disk to E, right? Mm -hmm. So that's actual instruction. So that's a C out part. Move uh, S to E. So move instruction means always the one on the top of the stack, just move. And the step three is a move n minus one back here. So here, this uh, highlighted code is a uh, step two. n minus one disk uh, is moved from S to T. Second, uh, so now move uh, S to E, the leftover, the largest disk from S to E, and then N minus one disk on T, move to E. Okay. Because this solution prints instructions, uh, like if you have one disk only, just uh, move instructions printed. It does not return any value. So this part prints instruction on the screen. Any other question? So recursive function design appears to be magic for beginners. It's a very magical one. But once you get used to that, it's a very powerful tool. And whenever you design something recursively, uh, the time distribution in solving the problem. In, in actually, any problem assignment, you need to write the code uh, most of the time. Right? But recursive function design is 99% uh, of the time, think. Once you get the idea, write the code, need only 1% of the time. That's a recursive function, function design. So you need to think, think, think for maybe three hours, and the writing code will be done in five minutes and the like. That's a typical property when you do the recursive function design. And uh, recursive function design is uh, very, very powerful, and uh, I have uh, met some uh, graduates, uh, uh, met, uh, came to my office one day and told me that one of the job interview questions was a recursive design. Okay? That was a Fibonacci series. Uh, then, uh, uh, if you catch the idea, it's a very easy to understand, and then it's a, the, your memory lasts a very long because uh, you f it's like you found some magic, so that uh, the, the your knowledge remains very long, unlike some other topics. Uh. So uh, typically, this is taught in programming two class uh, when I teach that. So after learning that from programming two class, uh, a few years later he graduated, uh, but he still remembered. Uh, the power of a recursive function design. And then he told me that that's a one of the things uh, he, could, he was able to get a job because he just answered the uh, Fibonacci series of recursive design without any problem, just uh, very smoothly, nicely explained that. Okay. So that's a recursive function. Any question? We are going to use this one for binary search tree implementation, which is far more complex than this one, actually, except for Hanoi. Those previous examples, it's a very simple ones, but uh, uh, binary search trees are more complex than that. So we will begin binary search tree next week. But this week, I want to review and refresh it and have a more understanding about the recursive design so that we will be ready for binary search tree next week. So what I want to do this week is uh, given as follows. Uh, if you simply do the practicing typing, all the codes are given, recorded, uh, so you can simply practice keyboarding. But if you want to actually learn how to design recursive function is, uh, given though those are uh, uh, prototypes only, though all of those ones I explained today, do not look up any code I explained at all. And then using this function header only, 
write the code yourself uh, after understanding the mechanism. Okay? But if you need help, just go back and then uh, see the recorded video again and come back. But before you submit the final one, just do all by yourself after completely understanding the concept. In this assignment, I don't need any multi-file project. I'll just put everything in one file, like I showed you today. Uh, the file name should be firstname.cpp, and the submit without the compression. Just submit the raw file, cpp file, on detail. And then all of those functions are tested at least twice, or you are encouraged to test it using some loop and many, many times and so on, but test at least twice. Any question about the assignment? All right, yeah, that's it for today.